いや随分とやられたみたいだね兄さん There he is a greatest foe yet What's gonna happen? We're gonna find out right now on the Eden of Grisaya What the hell are you? なんとなく分かってはいるんだろうデザインソルジャープロジェクトヒポーン計画第3期試験隊 TP427 そうだねラングレー風に言うのなら ET02 といったところかな Feels like I'm looking into a badly made mirror Pretty nauseating honestly 俺は兄さんの遺伝子を複製して作られた人間だからね似ているのは当たり前だ What's with that hair color? And your eyes. そうだねどちらかといえば姉さんに似ているのかな Do not say our sister. 外部からヘイフリック限界を操作して細胞子の促進により新生細胞を活性化ヘロメアの強制リライトで成長促進を繰り返した結果だ Look at that guy. My God. シンプな言い方になって恐縮だけどまあ天才の遺伝子を持つ証とでも言う感じかな逆に言えば俺たちの姉さんは誰の手を借りるでもなく生まれながらにして天才だったって話になるんだけど惜しかったね兄さんも少し間違えて生まれてくれば俺やカズキのように超人として生まれてくることができたのにね<笑>何がおかしい<笑> You're so actually happy about being a genius? You can't be anything special? There wasn't a day of my sister's life that she didn't regret her own brilliance People who don't need to work hard to succeed always fall behind in sheer experience Experience is far more valuable than any talent. Ziogatemo Mudadayo, Nisa. Zibun no Karadao Mitiminayo. Boroboro Janaika. Zoreni Oreo Tada no copy that Omoana Honga e. Kihon taking a potential of our Najdayo. Okubio Nano Moisho. Kiriru to Tenga Skerana no Moisho. Do you piss yourself any more people too? 俺は薬に頼らなければいけない兄さんとは違う試験の度に兄さんと比較されるのはもううんざりだそろそろ優劣ってやつをはっきりさせておきたい well, come on. Let's go. I could use a good challenge No one ever is good enough to challenge me So disappointed in everybody I fought up until now Maybe you'll be the one to change all that. Sky Nayo. Shinpai Nai. Nakamiwa. Nisan ga itsmo tskatte iru. Booster da. No, we can't take those. Because if we beat them being drugged up, we didn't really beat them, did we? We didn't use our own strength. We relied on chemical strength to win. We don't want that. I don't need them. Doste. わずかでも勝てる確率が上昇するなら使うべきだ中身を疑っているのならまずは俺が使ってみせようかそれともまだ人間であり続けることにこだわるつもりか I am human last time I checked 奪って壊して殺して世間では俺たちのことを鬼って言うんだよ兄さん <laughs> Don't you see, Typhon? That's what makes us human because we do those things to our own people. Jibun dakewa chigao nante o motte iru no nara, tonde mo nai kan chigai da. Somo somo, ikite kaero da nante kangaete nai da ro ne. Mo ichido dake yu yo. Tsukai na yo, ni san. I already said no. Oh! No. 
No, we're not using it. Well, save us, we're not using the drugs, but just in case that's a horrible decision, we're not. We're we're gonna save the. We're not. No, no, we're not using the drugs. We'll beat him without the drugs. We don't need these damn drugs. Kick his ass. Fundamentally, the boosters were designed to remove the limiter that suppresses your body's potential on a cellular level. Both the muscle cells that allow you to move and the neurons that convey sensory information to your brain are inherently capable of performing at remarkable levels. If every muscle in your arm completely ignored any potential damage to surrounding tissue, you could theoretically throw a fastball down 200 kilometers per hour. In exchange, however, you'd suffer ruptured blood vessels, torn tendons, and ligament injuries, probably even broken bones. To prevent that sort of thing, most sophisticated organisms enforce a certain level of considerate behavior on the cellular level, primarily by suppressing overexertion through the mechanism of pain. The company's boosters were less dangerous than the doping Oslo had been subjected to many years before, but they worked on the same basic principle. They enabled your cells to behave in inconsiderate ways while preventing your body from signaling danger through pain. And that wasn't all. The drugs acted to amplify the selfish desire for survival and coded in the DNA of every individual cell, enhancing the performance further still. In other words, a sniper might gain the eyesight of a bird of prey and muscles that wouldn't tremble even slightly under strain. And in hand-to-hand -hand combat, you'd exhibit the agility and ferocious survival instinct of a wild beast. Dosing myself with both boosters for a second time might have helped me win the fight, but it would also have all but eliminated our chances of taking out Oslo. I still remembered how easily he disposed of one experiment that had lunged at him in a bloodthirsty stupor. With a single swipe of his knife, he dealt a fatal blow, and as the thing screamed and died, he looked down on it with the cold eyes of a scientist studying a pe petri dish. <laughs> At the sound of these words, I looked up from the case and sensed a presence directly at my side. There's another one? Even as a thought ran through my mind, I realized that the man sitting in front of me had disappeared abruptly from view. It was as if he'd vanished into thin air. In the unfavorable conditions of night, vague sensory perceptions can trick you into seeing things that aren't really there. It's the same reason that children with a fear of the dark can convince themselves and surrounded by non-existent ghosts. The instant I realized what had happened, all colors seemed to fade from the world and the cell left of everything around me grew indistinct. Sensing him in a danger, my mind was rerouting all of the processing power that came into my vision and hearing, trying desperately to find an appropriate response. But of course, it was already too late. I heard my enemy's right hand and the knife it held cutting through the air. And in that moment, a heavy blow to the side of my head knocked every conscious thought out of my brain. The lettering on the deck in front of me was reduced to a series of incomprehensible symbols. My legs wobbled under the weight of my own body. Stars exploded violently before my eyes and an unpleasant heat filled the back of my throat. It was a familiar sensation. I was on the verge of losing consciousness. When you take a hit like that one, the natural human instinct is to curl up in the fetal position. Your body tries to retreat from the pain as if seeking the safety of your mother's womb. Interesting. I couldn't let myself fall. If the soles of my feet left the ground, I'd lose the ability to counterattack. I couldn't permit myself to fall. Back in grade school, when my mother and I were living together after fleeing my abusive father, I got sick of hearing the single mothers raise wimpy sons and made a point of stubbornly staying on my feet no matter how badly I got knocked around. My mother really was a weak person, but they didn't know the first thing about either of us and I couldn't let myself give it to anyone who made fun of her. My distorted field of vision was growing dark, there was nothing to grab onto. I tried to brace myself, focusing on the feeling of the deck beneath my feet, but in an instant I was struck in the back of my knees. <clears throat> No matter how stubbornly you try to resist, the sharp kick to a flexible joint will force it to bend. On pure conditioned reflex, I lashed out with my arm in an attempt to obstruct my enemy's movements at least slightly. But the man grabbed it easily and turned my body's momentum against me. By pulling my arm forward as my legs gave out under me, he sent me pitching face first toward the deck. A heavy shock jolted my brain. I felt my skull bounce up off a sheet of unyielding metal. I wasn't sure exactly what had just happened to me. 
There was a fire raging against my skull, and when I forced my eyes open, I couldn't see anything. By the time a little light began to return to the world, a knee pressed down on me from above, and one of my arms was twisted painfully behind my back. Yeah, I'm realizing that now. The voice that came from above me was full of condensation, but also tinged with something like disappointment. Murmuring, I suppose I could just kill you right now, but... Typhon paused from when the reached out for the case of boosters I tossed onto the deck earlier. <laughs> no, stop! The shoulder of the arm he'd immobilized was locked in the very limit of its range of movement. Forcibly moving it would dislocate the joint and tear my muscles, rendering the entire arm completely useless. Under these circumstances, that would be a heavy price to pay. Apparently sensing my hesitation, Typhon reached down and pressed a silver cylinder to my neck. <coughs> Before I could squirm away, he pressed a small button on the side of the injector, forcing a dose of the highly compressed drug into my bloodstream. It hurt. My entire body hurt. It felt like my eyeballs were going to burst out of their sockets. They bulged painfully in time with the beating of my heart. <clears throat> Trying to endure the overwhelming agony, I clenched my teeth so hard that one of them cracked. Every pore in my body opened, releasing copious amounts of sweat, and all of a sudden, everything in the world started to seem incredibly irritating. Above all else, the painful pressure of that bastard's knee on my back was absolutely infuriating. No matter what the cost, I had to knock this obstacle out of my path. Everything I'd done up until now would be meaningless if I didn't. My honed muscles strained with pain as my body forced them past their limits. <laughs> Snap. The sound seemed to come from inside my body, not the outside world. Had I broken a bone, or had my rational mind finally given way? I couldn't feel any pain. Ignoring the loud protests of my joints, I rose violently off the ground, pushing my brother up with my back. Oh. Son of a bitch. I'm gonna tear you limb from limb. From somewhere above me, I heard Typhon celebrating, his voice full of childish glee. He was actually enjoying this. In that respect, he resembled Oslo far more than me. That infuriated me all over again. He was dangerous, no doubt about it. This thing was dangerous. When I pushed up again, more forcefully than before, my brother hopped off me without offering any real resistance. As I slowly rose to my feet, I found myself staring into a bizarrely cheerful face. There was a definite resemblance, all right, but that just pissed me off even more. Had all the people I'd killed until now died looking at that face? All the more reason for me to put this thing down myself. Are you even human? どうだろうね。自分ではよくわからないけど、その質問はよくされるよ。お前は化け物かってね。兄さんだってそうだろ。俺たちは人を殺すために都合よく作り変えられて。そういう how the hell should I know? It would be a little easier to kill you if you were something else. That's the only reason I asked. I thrust my knife tenderly toward Typhon's face, my hand shaking slightly against his handle. Naturally, he avoided the slackbuster initial attack easily enough. But as I stepped forward, I pivoted sharply on the big toe of my leading foot, changing my half-hearted thrust into a vicious slice. There isn't any need to take your enemy down with a single stroke of your knife. You just need to make his life miserable. 
to persistently harass him over and over again. Over time, he'll grow increasingly irritated, losing his ability to think rationally. And eventually, he'll either charge forward to deal with the blow, or you'll catch a hint of fearfulness in his eyes, and that's when you go for the kill. At the end of the day, a knife fight boils down to repeatedly harassing your opponent while enduring his attempts to do the same. Huh, that's a different moral itself in that regard. Oh man, look at that. But of course, my brother knew these fundamental rules just as well as I did. And so he knew exactly how to leave himself subtly open to attack, tempting me into pressing forward too aggressively. By the time I realized I'd been manipulated, he blocked my stroke with his own blade, sending an unpleasant jolt through my arm. We paused for a moment, smiling wryly at each other with our faces only inches apart. I don't want to hear that from you of all people. As I crisscross blades ground against each other, I glanced quickly around me, and then pulled my leading foot backward half a step while pivoting on my rear leg. I wanted to launch a sharp kick into Typhon's flank, but my brother had anticipated that something was coming from the subtle shift in the presence of my knife. The instant I made my move, he spun quickly away, turning his back to me. The words, oh shit, flashed through my mind, but it was already too late. As both of my feet stopped moving, Typhon's leather boots stabbed deeply into my side. Ugh. He'd swung his slender leg around like a whip, landing a direct hit to my flank as I stood frozen in an unbalanced position. My organs screamed at the jarring impact, gastric juices squirted out of my mouth and nostrils. If I bent over and dropped to my knees, he was going to pin me down instantly. Adrenaline surged through my veins, goosebumps spread across my body, but instead of trying to brace myself, I let my body fall forward and swung my knife at my enemy with desperate force. <laughs> Got a hit. Can't celebrate now, though. When attacked with a knife, you can't just retreat backward in a straight line. Your enemy can easily transition to a thrust and close the distance between you. But some people run away reflexively. Some people stop moving. Some people stare fixedly at their enemy's blade. Some people can't even think ahead to the next move in the middle of every thrust and parry. And some people make their intentions too obvious, failing to lure their opponent into mistakes. All the people end up bleeding out on the floor. In a knife fight, you have to slip into your opponent's blind spots as you evade their attacks. Ideally, you want to get in behind their dominant arm. But if you can't secure the perfect position, you retreat, letting the enemy push you to the very verge of disaster. And that's when you collapse into them. Someone right in front of your feet it can actually be trickier to deal with than someone positioned directly behind your back. Swinging your knife straight down leaves you dangerously off balance, and if you try to counter with a kick instead, you're inviting the enemy to slash your legs from their lower stance. Rather than risk that kind of damage, it's better to retreat from the threat in front of you, even if it means abandoning your attack entirely. My vision clouded by sweat and tears, gastric juices burning in my throat, I swung my knife down at the pivot leg I used I glimpsed out the corner of my eye. Well, he dodged that. Still, I forced him to abruptly lift the leg that was supporting his weight. He'd be too off balance to move. Clinging to that thread of hope, I raised my head toward my enemy. I found myself looking at the barrel of a gun. Oh man. <sighs> Look at those eyes. The guy's crazed. Typhon had a knife in his right hand and a pistol in his left. While I was swinging my knife frantically around, he simply brought the gun to bear as he evaded. Whether he could actually hit me wasn't the issue. The barrel of the gun is a formidable weapon in itself. The instant someone turns a pistol on you, your mind focuses exclusively on its line of fire, and your body swings itself out of the way, <laughs> trying to escape the barrel pointing at my head, I turned my neck with unnatural force. A ball brutally burst from the muzzle, a split second later, just as the flash began to fade, a bullet sliced just past my ear and grazed my neck. My brother hopped diagonally backward on one leg, looking something like a pedestrian, trying to avoid a sudden splash of mud from a passing car. Swinging up the rifle I held in my left hand, I pulled the trigger without taking time to aim. There wasn't much chance I'd actually hit him. My first bullet cut through up the air, the second curved a stray, and the third flew well over his head. All I needed to do was buy myself enough time to get back on my feet. Of course, Typhon knew exactly what I was thinking, and he wasn't about to just let that happen. 
I tried to bring the barrel of my rifle to bear once again, but he trained his lighter pistol on my heartbeat more quickly. He's gonna hit me! Reacting instantly to the danger, I swung my rifle out in front of my face. The first of three shots he fired bit forcefully into the polymer receiver. Damn it! Tucking my damaged rifle against my chest, I rolled backward along the deck and pushed myself up with my shoulders and took aim at my enemy. When I pulled the trigger, the rifle fired a single shot and fell silent. The selector was still pointing to A. Holding down the trigger should have kept the rifle firing until its magazine was empty. Yeah, the first shot had probably left the bolt carrier hopelessly warped. Glancing down, I saw the uninjected cartridge stuck between the bolt and the lip of the ejection port, emitting a small trail of white smoke. <laughs> Suppressing an urge to curse, I steadied myself on one knee, then quickly pulled up the bolt handle, but found I couldn't bring it back even half of its usual range. If I could even load it properly, this gun was nothing more than a blunt instrument. Without a moment's hesitation, I hurled it at my enemy. The rifle spun through the air like a boomerang, heading directly for Typhon's face. I followed in its shadow, stepping quickly forward from my low kneeling position. But even as my brother knocked the rifle aside with his knife, he brought his pistol to bear on me. Ordinarily, it's nearly impossible to perform complex movements simultaneously with both your right and your left hand. All the more so when you're talking about something as challenging as instantly deflecting a flying object with, while also aiming a gun. But when you're an experienced knife fighter who's learned to look for your next target even as you're killing the previous one, it is possible to keep track of multiple incoming threats without even looking around, almost as if you have the eyes in the back of your head. When a knife comes whistling through the air, you block it at its exact center of gravity. For a true professional, that isn't anything special. That's right. Look in my eyes. Look in my eyes and try to guess what I'm doing next. You know how this works, don't you? It's much easier to attack than to defend. There's only one step in going on the offensive, launching your attack. But the person defending has to both perceive that attack and then counter it. That's two steps. No matter how naturally sharpened your senses might be, that fundamental numerical difference can't be completely eliminated. My brother could only fend off my attacks because we were very similar creatures, and our minds worked in very similar ways. When you can anticipate an attack, it's possible to block it. In that case, I just have to attack in a way he couldn't possibly anticipate. Simple as that. Here I come. Bending my leading leg at the knee, I charged shoulder first toward Typhon, hiding my lower abdomen from his view. <laughs> Ever since I was a little kid, I trained myself to be quick on my feet. Leaning forward as I slipped into range, I managed to land a solid, forceful headbutt. It was like something out of a brawl between two kids. I knew a thing or two about scraping, of course. <laughs> I learned it from the very best. My master always was a bit of a thug, all too willing to solve her problems through violence. Thugs tend to be dim-witted, although they're also surprisingly shrewd. But my master also taught me that craftiness can only get you so far. I sat through her lessons day in and day out, trying my best to study as she poked me in the head with a stick. Hmm. Thanks to a truly excessive amount of effort, I'd managed to pick up a few clever little tricks that your average dimwit wouldn't be able to pull off. <laughs> Kazami-style self-defense. Barehanded pistol snatch. Pretty cool, right? You took the words right out of my mouth. His body quivering with rage, my brother glared at me with a new intensity in his eyes. Those were the eyes of a man possessed by violence. Those were the eyes of someone who'd been granted strength instead of earning it through experience. It was the exact same way my father had glowered at me. Drunk on this power his money gave him. God, it made me sick to my stomach. What's the matter, kid? First time you've gotten shot? Hurt, doesn't it? You tense your muscles to try and stop the bleeding, but it only surges all out faster. Once you've lost enough blood, your muscles begin to stiffen, losing their explosive power. When you realize that time isn't on your side, you start to panic. You can't hesitate or you'll stop moving entirely. Don't get too cocky yourself, little brother. 